Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you more, especially for this time. Once again, you bring us together as your holy people before you in your house. That Lord, we will receive your word and receive your Holy Spirit and be in close covenant with you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all be seated, church. Be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. This evening we're going to um, touch on something that is of vital importance. Therefore, I have asked our brother Elder to kindly interpret for us so that we all get to understand the teachings of tonight. So if you're watching us from anywhere on the face of the earth or from any of our branches, bear with us. Tonight we have an interpreter. Now what is if you're chichi baby and I am crab tenemu baby biara and ni and quadri and crumu and unti and what fa will be a we're talking about you know, the title for, today, for tonight's teaching is The Sin of Compromised Covenant. The Sin when we Compromise a Covenant. Amen. Amen. So the sin of compromised covenant. In other words, when you a covenant that you've, you've breached, you have not been faithful to the covenant, but you, you've gone against the covenant, it becomes a sin. So the sin of compromised covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. And for our text, let's go to Exodus 34. Verses 10 to 17. Exodus 34. Verses Ten to seventeen. And this evening I'm reading from the NIV or the New International Version of the Bible. Now NIV. Exodus thirty four, beginning from verse ten. Then the Lord said, I am making a covenant with you before all your people. I will do wonders never before done in any nation in all the world. The people you live among will see how awesome is the way that I, the Lord, will do for you. Obey what I command you today. I will drive out before you the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. Be careful not to make a treaty or a covenant with those who live in the land where you are going, or there will be a snare among you. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and cut down their Asherah poles. Do not worship any other god. But the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land. 
na hwe ye se enipa ne wo asase no so mo no mo ko apam fofuro bi mu for when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to them they will invite you and you will eat their sacrifices na wo mra omo ba fori e ama omo abosom no aduane omo be ye na anhwa a mo be di ebi and when you choose some of their daughters as wives for your sons and those daughters prostitute themselves to their gods they will lead your sons to do the same na se mo fa ho man bi aware e ma ene me ma aware e gamanfo na mo de mo bo mo a anhwa mo nso mo be yesa do not make any idols ma enye abosom bia do not make any idols ma obi bia enye abosom e bia the lord said na ewrade nyankopon se he said i make a covenant with you na me ewrade nyankopon me ne mo ko apam I'm making a covenant with you. Eh ya pamo a me ewrade me ne mo ko mu. God said I am making a covenant with you. Nyankopon se me ne mo ko apam emu. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, you and I know that we are in a covenant relationship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Na enuan ma do fo mo be kai se me ne umie nu no ye ne awurade nyankopon wa pam enam ye awurade Jesus. Every believer or Christian se wo ye ojidi ni Kristo ni bia no. Yes, in a covenant relationship with God. Enye e wo ne awurade nyankopon e wo apam emu through our Lord Jesus Christ. Enam ye awurade Jesus Kristo eso There have been many covenants. Apart from the day, every bray and every awesome. When Christ came, He brought the final, the new, and the perfect covenant, the last covenant. Now, when we are Jesus Christ to buy, no, or the apart from no, ni e ye ni e swe ni anadi chatu okra ene buy. And all the covenants are more or less the same, with some variations. And the one that you and I are in now is the new covenant. Mediated through the blood of Jesus. Now, upon the blood of Jesus, we see them. Upon the blood of Jesus, we see them. Now, the meaning of the old covenant is that the blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus. Now, the meaning of the old testament covenant is that the blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus. Now, the meaning of the old testament covenant is that the blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus. Now, the meaning of the old testament covenant is that the blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus. Now, the meaning of the old testament covenant is that the blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus. Now, the meaning of the old testament covenant is that the blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus. Two or more people or parties came together. Na e yini pa mi eno anani abrosa ene babi shiemu. They came together. Omo babi shiemu ano wakambo. In a bond, they tied themselves together. Na omo ya enti chiriyebi ema omo angasa omo. A bond that is not separable. They cannot be separated. E ya enti chiriyebi a obi biya enti mi insane no ano obi enti mi muso. And These parties will then have a contract agreement, an agreement. Na ebasa na omu ni na yaju kwa edge dia omu yano etum. Praise the Lord. It's a very strong bond between two or more parties or people. Eye enti chilebiya emu adi eme ni pa mienu anani abrosa by a contract agreement. Eye adi nsi a omu ni na dia tumu se se ene yekono. And the parties who all agree. On some promises, you make promises here and promises there. Now, a basa will be bearer of what's our pamonomo. Edgenia, Omo Canina, Eddie, said, Oh, been Kuma, and I won't be far from Munina Mojitum. Some conditions or stipulations, some conditions. And never will hold your good acquaintance, say, near Bayano, and I have a fast. Privileges or benefits or blessings. A year acquaint you be a Mubina and fast war, and I near you be a bow and chain. And responsibilities. Any assumption so as to na asudi a ewechiri. So that every covenant has, as part of it, these ingredients or elements. Na apam biya no ewo mochi seya eti se anani ema biya ewo musa. Promises on all from all the parties. Na aye bosha ewo ho ema enipeku ni nina. Stipulations or conditions. Anani ema biya mu di ego apu ema se wey eni aye no. Privileges or benefits or blessings. Aye, emphasis or insira ana bivisa. And responsibilities. Ena ewo ejuma yebinso ewo. Once you have a party to that to that covenant, there are some things that is expected. There are some things that are expected of you. Na wamra odo huwa kwa drum sa apamne di. Omo ushere kwa nse bivu owa esa oye. Now in the world, 
such a covenant between two equal parties is called bilateral. Now, if we are similar, say a farm you know, a baba be similar, and you are a pamwa, you know, not dear to me, so I'm no more because I'm a pamwa. If elder and I are to go into a covenant, we go into it as equals. Now, say a also for penny, and a mere mina, a yard being cross here, quite pam be more. The yaka woman, you move be as your bennies up a pair. You are both human beings. There is nothing I have that he hasn't got, or vice versa. So, in going into that agreement, we go into that covenant as a bilateral covenant. As equals. Hallelujah. But church, this is not so with God. When it comes to God, this is not so. And for that reason, many of us sin or we go against the covenant that we are in with God. We assume that we are in a covenant agreement with a fellow human being. Because that, that's what we are familiar with. That's what we know. But with God, being in covenant with God is not so. That is not the case. And therefore, our covenant relationship with God is referred to as unilateral. Bilateral means the two are equal, and though you do this, you do also that, that, you know, we share promises, we share responsibilities, we share the benefits, everything that is in the covenant is shared amongst us. Now, the is saying, you you contribute your part. That is a bilateral covenant. When it comes to our relationship with God, it is a unilateral covenant. I'll, now, I'll explain very soon. Number one, it was God who initiated that covenant. You see, in a bilateral agreement for them between Elder and myself, we realized that I realized that I need him. He also realized that he also needs me. Now, so, it's a uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, come in, can we praise the Lord? Democracy. Hallelujah. Yes, I've been on. I've been crawling. I'm over here. Oh, can no one so I can. Oh, try what you are. No one so I can. I don't know when you know my job to me. Son, say a uniform, you know, and it was I do my crawling. I need him. He needs me. Oh, no, so so for no, he am me. Miss me. So we go to each other. I believe I'm a calling. Tell us what to be by me. And because we need each other. I will contribute something. And he, he also contribute something. He will bring half. And I will bring my half. And the conditions you fulfill half and also fulfill half. And then the blessings or benefits we share. He takes his part and I take my part. But that is not the case with God. In the case of our covenant agreement with God, First, it was God who initiated the covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. And therefore, he says in verse 4, in verse 4, he said, um, sorry, in verse 10, sorry, then the Lord said, 
I am making a covenant with you. You see, we didn't even know that we need to have a covenant with God. You, are, you and I were bound in sin. We were on our way to, to uh, uh, we were dead on our way to eternal death. We didn't even know how to come out of it. We didn't know how much we needed God. That is the situation of the majority of people in the world today. They are ignorant of the situation that they are in. And they don't know that they are in that situation. They don't, they, so they don't know that they need to get out of that situation. And even if they knew they wouldn't know how to come out of that situation. Because they are completely powerless. They are powerless. And that was the situation for you and for me before we came to God through Jesus Christ. But God who knows all things saw our need for him. Therefore, he initiated and came to us. We didn't go to him. He came to us. The Bible said that when we were sinners, he made a son who knew no sin to die for us. And he said, I am making a covenant with you. And then God goes on to to mention a part of the covenant, what he's going the covenant, what he's going to do for you and for me. He said, before all your people, I will do wonders never before done in any nation in all the world. There are people who live among among the people you live among will see how awesome is the word that I do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, we're saying that the covenant that you and I are in with God is a unilateral covenant. God initiated it. And He set out. The elements or the conditions. And then he confirmed it. So God originated or started it. Then he laid down the conditions. And then confirmed it. Confirmed it. The Bible said that Jesus is the author. And the perfecter or finisher of our faith. And he said, If you are now will accept the covenant, then he will do wonderful acts. He will do wonderful acts. All people will see what acts, what works he will do in our lives. This does not require you doing anything. He said he will do the wonderful acts. And then he said he will do things that are awesome. Huge. Big. And all I shall see. May God do wonderful acts in your life. Church. And may God do things that are awesome in your life, church. And then he said <laughs> he would drive out before his people the enemy. Defeat the enemies. 
So that when you read these things, we take it, we, we think it's a small thing. We think it's a small thing. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I will drive out before you the Amorites. Canaanites. Hittites. And a Hittite for Perizzites. And a Perizzites for Hivites and Jebusites. Jebusites for Nina. This were mighty city nation. They were mighty nations. Na Sabre Mono, where were you? Am I be an army? Am I am I thing? They were not just a group of twenty or thirty. No, they were mighty with with th hundreds of thousands of armies. Na omu nye nipa kakrebi, omu nye nipa bia, omu dosan, asra fom pim 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 pim. The Jebusites, for example, the Jebusites. Na, asi Jebusites, for nankasa mune die. The, 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 their capital city was a city called Jebus. Jebus. Na, asi omu kro kesi ya nankasa nene nye feni Jebus no. And that's what became Jerusalem. Asi ebe a yin na ene, ena baba ya Jerusalem. When David took it, he renamed it Jerusalem. Now David far a di sun kuni mano of rewa Jerusalem. And Jebus was situated on a mountain. Na aya sa ni pe kwe no no moti bepo etifin. And no one had been able to defeat the Jebusite before. Obi biye no a Jebusite for obi duom sun kuni mano. It was impossible to go up on the mountain and drive out the Jebusites. E ya di a e di se only one moko abe fu bepo na kwe etifin. But God took Jerusalem for, for the Israelites. This is just one example. Just clap your two hands for Jesus. Amen. Amen. But God says something. He says, all you have to do is be careful. That you don't break the covenant. So verse 11. Or rather verse, verse um, 12. He said, be careful not to make a covenant or a treaty with those who live in the land where you are going. Now, if you say that you are going to go there, you will be driven out. Be careful you don't go into a treaty with them. Because you will be driven out. Be careful you don't go into a treaty with them. Because you will be driven out. Be careful you don't go into a treaty with them. Because you will be driven out. Be careful you don't go into a treaty with them. Because you will be driven out. Smash their sacred stones and cut down their Asherah poles. You know, I destroy their, place, their places of idol worshiping. Do not worship any other god. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Hallelujah. And on and on and on. We are we the, we are told not to make any covenant or treaty or agreement with the people among whom we dwell. Now Otwaso could do say, but be a year corner and I drew a Verse do not make any idols. Do not make any idols. Now, when we come to the New Testament, and then we come to the time in which we are now, though this scripture refers to the Old Testament, it is relevant to us even more now. Considering the fact that now Christ has come and has made the covenant perfect. perfect. That covenant now is perfect. A new covenant is perfect. So you see, whatever is perfect, when you make when you make create a small problem with it, it becomes imperfect. Uh, a covenant that is not perfect, a covenant that is imperfect, will be able to accommodate some imperfections. But whatever is perfect, 
who only accept perfection. Now let's go to the book of First Corinthians. Chapter eight. Verses four to thirteen. First Corinthians chapter eight. Verses four to thirteen. And this scripture is a bit difficult to understand, so I'll take my time and explain to you. Now, this is chapter eight. Four to thirteen. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there's no God but one. For even if there are so called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods. And many lords. Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all from whom all things come, and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came, and through whom we live. Now verse seven says. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat, sacrif when they eat sacrificial food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god. And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you, with all your knowledge, eating in an idol's temple, would that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So, this weak brother or sister, for whom Christ died, is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again. So that I will not cause them to fall. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we're talking about the sin of compromising the covenant or going against the covenant. Now, the sin against the sin of going against the covenant. Yeah, say, a covenant is a very strong and unbreakable bond. Between two parties or two, two or more people. Now, Paul is here using food sacrificed to idols as an example. Now, Paul there using here food. Sacrifice to idols as an example. It can be anything. It can be clothes that you wear on your body. It can be ornaments that you use to beautify your body. It can be places you go to. Ceremonies to take part in. Even people you work with. Regularly as your friends or your 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 companions. Here we are using food as an example. It can be anything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
It can be anything that I've been dedicated to idols. I've been dedicated to idols. Or some things that 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 belong to the domain or the world of idols. For example, you can wear bees on your beads on your body. Now, Those bees may have been handed down. My ancestors have been dedicated to idols. They, they are given to you to wear on your body. Now, I say, I need a idea. Na 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 no mo ena a different abosomo so a di eja. I say also fatu onsa. These are bees which have been dedicated to idols. Aye, I need a idea. Ma abosom. Or you may go to a crown market and buy some beads. And now, say, I bet me a good job and can a bonting so I cut a hundred. And wear them. Now they wash it. But these bees may be things that belong to the domain of idols. And when you wear them, the same. You may even go to and buy a piece of cloth. But the design that you used to cut it and wear it. That design may be design that belongs to idols. So, yes, even Paul said, even if you're a mature Christian. Now, mature Christian. Christonia when you have to be very careful. Lest you sin against Christ. Thinking that all oh, you know it all. Now, why do you may sin against Christ? Why you sin against Christ? Check a walk with me to the text. He says. Um, so then, about eating food sacrificed to idols. Verse 4. We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world. And that there is no God but one. Here, Paul is saying because at Corinth or in Corinth, now the Paul say, Corinth to there were many gods. And the Corinthians worshipped idols that they themselves have imagined. When you go to some parts of the world, it's like every family has their family idol. Every family. You see, they worship idols. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. At Corinth, everyone wanted to worship a God. The Corinthian church, as well as the, Gal the, the Galatian church, were the two churches that gave Paul a lot of problems. Mm. So, what was happening at that time was that Anybody will imagine, they just by their own imagination will think of a God. Then they will make an idol of how they see that God. Just like the Israelites told um, they made a, Aaron made a golden car for them. They said, oh, behold your God who brought you out of Egypt. Now, what said Aaron, Aaron, so there were many gods in, in, in the city of Corinth. According to each person's own imagination. And for Paul to wash, to get them to get rid of this into a difficult in the church. According to the tradition, that's the tradition that they knew. So it was hard for Paul to get them to get rid of that thing and that there's only one God. And they will sacrifice food to these their own idols. And they will eat the food. 
No, a movie are no one's way. And Paul said, and those were no idols at all. Nah, Paul said, we're money there. We're money about some beer. They were no idols. People, they were just imagining them to be gods, but they were not gods. Nah, I'm not imagining the susu now, so I'm money about beer. And therefore, food that they sacrificed to these gods were not food sacrificed to idols. Nah, and they're not money about some stuff for a bono. And they're not money about some no no. They made the god. They they imagine they made the idol. I'm on a dream. No, I'm not about some stuff. I hear honey. And they imagine that that idol was a god. Now, I'm on a dream. No, I'm on a set. And they will sacrifice things and food. Now, I'm on a walk for it. No, I'm on a dream. And mama, no, mama, mama, I'm sweaty. Those. Idols were no gods at all. Nah, yes, sir. Abusum, no money, abusum, bia. They were only figments of their imagination. And your own mind, Jane, no money, susu, yebi, no tewa, no susu, no. Praise the Lord. But he's saying that, despite that, there are real idols. The idols themselves, idols, real idols are there. Nah, abusum, no kasa, no kasa, so, eh, oh, 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 hallelujah, amen. Well, five, well, five says for. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many laws. So, yet for us, verse 6, there is but one God. The Father, from, from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord. Jesus Christ. Through whom all things came and through whom we live. Praise the Lord. Now, this knowledge, what Paul is saying here, was meant for those who are matured in the Lord. Now, I say, Nim dia walkan wase. Now, Paul, eh, kasafa. Not for not for new converts. Enya abe fufuono. Not for those who are mature. Enya omo a omo niye no. Not for those who refuse to become mature. Enya omo omo doma bo mutrim po si omo mutrim po pisi. There are many Christians who have been Christian for years, even twenty years, and they are still. Where is the new convert? Now, I say, Obi, wow, wow, cause sorry, baby, I'm fear you. No, now, so the new year, to say, I bear for a phone. Hallelujah. These are not, these are, these are, these are not the ones that Paul is talking about. I say, we are not young, grow for a Paul. I come once, I'm not. Then Paul, then Paul goes on to say, but not everyone bears seven. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Now, any Obi biara, any what say him be. Some people are still so accustomed to idol that. When they eat sacrifice food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god. Nah, and nipa no nam aye amamre no so ede eduani ma abosom no mu dia no ma dwe yom se omo dia ma abosom. And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. Na esan se omo adwe mu nye dru ntino egu omo ho fi. In other words, you know, Paul is saying that some have been accustomed to the trap. They are so used to the tradition of idol worship. That anything that they do, even eating uh, food, they, they, they look at it as being sacrificed, something that they sacrifice to the idols. And then Paul goes on to say something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As in First Timothy 4:4, Timothy The Bible says that we should not refuse any food. Once you pray over it, all food, all kind of food is good. Once you pray over it, it's sanctified. It's holy. Now, I say, Abrivia will be near the end. Over one pair of shoes will be done. And from so be no. So we are talking about two groups of people here. Now, aha, any problem you don't want to know? Those who have the knowledge that they are real. Real idols and fake idols. Now, omo a omo a dream on where ye abosum ankasa any abosum any. Then Paul said, but supposing you you know that there are fake idols, you know. Now, osuma for Paul and the obusa was said, so we know say abosum bawa any. And then, food which have been sacrificed to a fake idol, a false god. Now, Adrianiya odiama abosum a enhuni any no. 
You know that it's safe to eat it. So even go to the temple of that other. Whilst you are eating it, you know that it's safe. It's okay to eat it. The immature Christian, the new convert, sees you eating sac food sacrifice to idols in the temple of an idol. You become confused. You become confused. Ah, it is, isn't this brother or this sister? Is it not, is that, not that elder? Or that pastor. Why is it going against the covenant? Because God has said we should we shouldn't have anything to do with idols. Here he is eating food sacrificed to idols in the temple of an idol. So that person will then assume. Now, oh, oh, then no. that if that pastor or sister or elder is eating that, then, it's, then it means that what the Bible is saying is not true. It's okay for me to eat now, food sacrificed to idols. Because not all possess the knowledge that you have. So Paul is saying that, but then by doing that, you are causing that brother to sin against God. Go against the, co the, 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 the covenant. And if you do that, then you have sinned. No, you didn't intend to sin. It wasn't your intention to sin, but you have sinned. By causing someone to sin, you have also sinned. And then Paul said, okay, if that is the case, that being the case, if the food that I eat will cause someone to sin, then I will not eat it at all. Then let me die from hunger. I will eat at all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your two hands for Jesus. We bring it to practical terms today. I'm going to say that we have many idols and many forms of idol worshiping, especially in Africa, there are plenty. Now, say, I'll be more and there. I was on someone, it will do what I would be brave. And many Christians are able to advance reasons why it is okay. Now, a Christopher, no, any near man would do me brave, who are come so way there, and they yet to eat certain foods. Wear certain things. Go to certain places. Take part in certain practices. And they don't say anything. They don't say anything wrong with them. But the thing is that there are real goals and real laws. Now, no cross me woman say. Idols, idols exist. Now, which is a bosom? So, though what you are doing, what will you think is not harmful, it's not going against the covenant. Now, what do you say? Now, we are and yet I dare be proud and I could hear a year a permanent. The likelihood of it is that it may be very well going against the covenant that we are in with Jesus. Now, a seven no cranny and say, a bit me a call, it's your permanent. I mean, against it, a bit me a quit here. Or even if it doesn't, it may cause someone who sees you to go a bit further because he cannot tell the difference, and that person may sin. Now, and yes, sir, a bit more will be for front of our And when uh, that person, you have called that person to sin. Now, a basa now, what would you can't yes, I'm so either way, it's a sin for you. Now, a coin be asked, and your money could see out. Either way, you have sin. A coin be asked, why your money? No, Paul said, in that case, I won't do it at all. Now, Paul said, and your sanity, I mean, I will not do it at all. And yet, me, Nishi. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap for two hands for Jesus. Yeah, my answer, my will rise. Yeah, my answer, my answer. Because. God said, I will make a covenant with you. Exodus 34. Exodus 34. Verse 
text. I will make a covenant with you. He said, it's a unilateral covenant. God initiated it. God initiated it. He perfected it. So we are now in that in the perfected, the perfected era time of the covenant. And what is perfect? When you, you make a little scratch on it, you, you, you destroy the whole thing. What is beautiful, if you make a small a mark on it, you spoil it. Remember when, my, when we first moved here, my office was uh, freshly painted. Fresh, fresh paint, new paint. The office. Now, see, your bar, Hana, I'm on the air paint. A funny them off a fair. Perfect. The beer, yeah, perfect. After some time, I came, I, I walk into the office and I saw there was somebody, there was somebody's finger, fingerprint on the finger on that. That fingerprint just spoiled everything. Now, I said that for a call, no one's so been sat at Yaka at Nano. I drink water, I drink I drink water, I drink water, and that, that, even though the whole world was so high, that, that adrenaline plant spoiled everything for, for, for. But when the, now that the world is full of adrenaline, you know, one more adrenaline would not make any difference. You see what I mean? Yes. So, Handling what is perfect has to be done with perfection. That's why we shouldn't compromise on the covenant. You must not compromise the covenant. No, God said that once you keep the covenant, He will do wonderful acts. Awesome things. People will see and they will marvel. He said, then it, it will also use you to do wonderful acts. He also he will use you. Now because you compromise on the covenant, therefore, don't see these things in our lives. We keep breaking the covenant. Because you are a time of grace. Yeah. We are not consumed. Nah, we are not killed. We don't die. But we don't see the power of God in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap our two hands for Jesus. So this evening, we're talking about the sin of compromise covenant. Okay, covenant is a covenant. Covenant is a covenant. Don't take it for granted. Uh, don't take it as a joke. Something trap or something casual. No. How do I will Christ die? Come and suffer and die on the cross. Nah, I didn't think that Christ would be with no one man. He said, "Me and so." If that covenant was so trifling, so casual, so why, why, nah, why yes. would God come and die? So our family are there. Can take it to be a So I didn't think that Christ would be with no one. So I want to challenge you this evening. Nah, and then you know, me no quite can see. Challenge you tonight. Me no quite can see one a dream. That as many as we take tonight's message seriously, God will surely work out wonderful acts in your life. Wonderful things in your life. Doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, you would do wonderful things. And God is faithful. No, I told them what you hear on Michelle Kam that the children. The children who, who have grown up under this ministry. All the children. All of them. Growing up in this ministry. Not one. I have not seen one who has a demonic demonic activity in his or her life. Not one. I lay hands and they fall under, they fall under, under the anointing. They just fall under the anointing. But many of us who came from outside. But many of us who came from outside. Hallelujah. Amen. We were born in the house. In fact, we were born in the family house. 
And circumcised uh, in the family house. We were named in the family house. We married in the family house. Everything is outside the church. And we grew up not in the church. We grew up elsewhere. When the first came with problems. But God is delivering us. And many have been delivered. If you have it, may God deliver you this month. That's why the children don't keep the children at home. Bring them. In time of COVID, bring the children. And I'm very happy when they find out the anointing. They just fall down. They don't, they, they, they don't manifest. I was in Michelle Camp last week, Sunday, uh, this past Sunday. My wife and I were there. And I spent a long time talking and teaching. Now, in the end of the, of the meeting, I asked them, we didn't have time, so just touch my hand and go and sit down. Now, we were summon and of from say, Wow, best of Bompa and Brad, fans have a kind of son. So then, who are grown up in this ministry, they often are the anointing. Now, and more fun of whom must have moved with you. The adults who have come in from outside. Now, and Penifone and Fribe have been our banner dear. Some of them were even insulting me. You didn't cry, I didn't attempt it. No, they will not bring their hand when insulting me. Now, the, now, the, now the demons. And now this lady who is new in the church. Pregnant about, about six months pregnant. She has three girls. This is her fourth, fourth pregnant. Three girls. And when he got to her turn, he drew no sooner by him. It was a demonic manifestation. Demons started shouting. That they will not allow her to have that boy. See, she has not done that. She hasn't performed the scan. She doesn't know that what, what, what the, the, the sex of the baby is. They know, but they, they know. They know that she's carrying a boy. But she has had that you know. You see how, how far they are ahead of us. So, the best thing is that we destroy the pregnant. The best thing is that Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I have, to take, I have to take time to deliver her. Deliver her. And another sister also. The family said they, they, gave, they gave the woman to the man to marry. Now, a was your phone say, no one Talking about talking about cosmic marriage. Now, Cassafa, if you are the man came to us, we gave the woman to him to marry. Now, Bemana by and ten and you knew about a man so That's like Satan said, Well, it has been delivered to me. And I'll give it to whoever I wish. If you want to buy well, I'll give it to you. Study up on some kind of way. They can't be a mommy. Near me, me, pen, and I'm the man. They gave the woman. Is that not God? They gave the woman to the man to man. So now they are taking their woman by their own. I'm going to go to the man. I'm going to go to the man. And that we have to take care of deliverance as well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The, boys, the children who are growing out, all they know is the covenant from their, from their childhood days, covenant, covenant. They hear the word of God. You see, they, they train up a child the way you should go. They grow up free of demonic activity. No, they have not been contaminated by idols. No, from Never involved in anything, anything idol. No, from Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, it's a sin to compromise the covenant that you are in with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. I, I, I questioned uh, somebody concerning dressing. I see our ladies, it has become a fashion that the ladies, the women, now you all have finger, what do you call it, fingernail exchange. Is that fingernail exchange? 
And it's colored, colored red, gold, green with a black star in the middle. Ghana flag. And when I'm doing delivery, I have to be very careful because those, those um, fingernails are sharper than any two-edged sword. So you have to be very careful about those fingernails. So some of them are as long as from here to here. You know, colors. Some are red, gold, green, black stars. Some are stars and stripes, American flag. Some are what, Union Jack, UK flags, all kinds of colors. You don't know where these things come from. And yet, you follow them. You don't follow them. I follow them. Let everyone be very careful. Now, I see a brief be a young she, 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 a young she. Maybe for you it's okay. Now, I see a brief be a white bean when you see a young she. When you look at your finger, hey, these fingers are nice. Sometimes I go, I go, I go to face, you know, you know, Facebook. Ah, Facebook. When you go to, when you go on Facebook, we see some, some, some sisters in this church, you not even recognize them. Have you seen Facebook? You all have Facebook, uh, uh, is, that, is that right? Hey. Uh, and some of you have changed your name. The names you have there is different from how we know you. Ah, and you were near. Or so on, I fear Jebusites. I fear Jebusites. They give themselves different names. Now, or sugar and what you know. Ah, is it did not this girl I've been praying for marriage. And look at how she has posed on Facebook. Is it all this man I've been laying hands for deliverance? And uh, look at the shoes that he's wearing. Please let her be very careful. Because the whole world is seeing you. Now, I see you here. It's on. So, yes, we are seeing you now. The whole world. Facebook, the, the whole world. You are exposing yourself to the whole world. We are seeing you now, baby. Angels are seeing you. Demons are looking at you. I'm up home. I'm up morning. So, home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be my DP. What do you need DP? You got a picture for WhatsApp. They have been calling me. We don't have your answer. What do I have my DP for what? DP. What does this stand for? Is it picture or what? What? Display picture, DP. They have been calling me. I said, I won't, I won't give you any DP. Hallelujah. Amen. God knows my DP. I only give my DP to God. That is all. So if you look at my WhatsApp there, there is there any picture there? No, I don't want any picture there. I see your picture. Your, your, I see your picture. He changes the DP every week. <laughs> every week, different DP. Hey, <laughs> they are nice. They are nice, but uh, some with a beard, some without a beard. Hallelujah. Amen. But I don't see Reverend Yemos. Do you have a DP? I don't have a DP. So, uh, are you not a handsome man? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.